Hello, let us continue our discussion on I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King Jr. In my last lecture, I have completed the particular section where Martin Luther King has pointed out that there is nothing to be satisfied upon. And he continues in this particular fashion. He says, I am not unmindful that some of you have come here out of your of great trials and tribulations. That means he knows very well that it is not, it's a matter of duty, it's a matter of you know, trial, it's a matter of tribulation that some of you, you, you people who are actually assembled here. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. So, you know, different patterns of people, different, you know, different uh, perspectives have been incorporated here. And the people with, with different ideas, people with different positions, they have assembled there. And Martin Luther King is, uh, Jr. is actually focusing to them. He says, some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds, winds of police brutality. So each and every line, these are actually indicating towards different levels of exploitation, different levels of torture. You know, some are... Here it is pointed out that I am not mindful that some of you have come here out of great trials. Okay, that is the police trials. I know obviously the trials at the justice at the courts and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells, and some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. So the three levels of exploitation, three levels of tortures, three levels of domination has been incorporated in these three lines. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Everywhere you are facing the same. You have creativity. You have done something regarding the, the creative words, regarding freedom and regarding the brotherhood. But ultimately, you have got the suffering in return. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Redemption, that is the fundamental term. You know, these are the terms that have been related with the scriptural sources. And he says, continue to work with the faith that unarmed suffering is redemptive. That means it might be possible that in future you will find the same kind of suffering in future. And these will obviously provide you the redemption. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Lusania. Go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. So these are the places that have been mentioned here. These are actually indicating towards the different parts of the country. And everywhere the same kind of problem, everywhere the same kind of cruelty, everywhere the same kind of exploitation is perceptible. So Martin Luther King Jr. is stating just return to your own places and you know that today or tomorrow these have to be changed. These should be changed. These must be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. Let us not live in a life of despair. Let us not move in the life of despair. Rather, we will think something positive. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Now, that is the last part of this particular lecture. This is the last part of this particular address. And from that very, you know, refrain like repetitive phrases, I have a dream. This particular ad name of the or title of this address has been pointed out. He says that I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream and that dream has to be materialized. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream where, you know, it's a idealized version of America where everything will be in a single scale, obviously. No differentiation, no exploitation, no domination, but it is a heavenly abode. So it is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream 
that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. You see? And where is the inequality? The inequality has been created by some of the people, some of the politicians, some of the power-hungry politicians who actually used these differentiations to get be privileged or get privileged. So I, I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. You see, each and every moment, each and every paragraph, these are actually indicating towards the abolition of the separatism. The sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners where the exploiter and exploited relations is being incorporated. In future, they will sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state that is sweltering with the heat of injustice where Injustice is prevailing throughout. Sweltering with the heat of oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. It will be present. The freedom, justice, these will become, become possible. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where there will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. It is not the skin color, it is not the epidermalization, it is not the epidermis that will discriminate between these two. Rather the character, the temperament, the person, you see. That will be the marker with the help of which the differentiation will be made. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullifications. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. You can find, it's a dream obviously. And I must say, till that, the same discrimination is prevailing. As you know, in the present scenario that is happening in America. He says, in Mississippi, in Alabama, everywhere, these are the different provinces, different states, where the same things have been incorporated. He says, therefore, the town in Alabama with its vicious resists, with his governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day, there will be there. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted Every hill, every mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. So, topsy turvy. Everything that is crooked, everything that is rough, everything that is high and low, the differentiation, everything will be simple, leveled. So that's why he says, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. Again, symbolic, as you can see, these are referring to the high status and lower status. The rough places will be made plain. The crooked places will be made straight. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith. 
that I go back to the South with this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. Though the despair is mountain-like, but a small stone of hope is still lurking there, you see. With this particular faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. At one point, it is the jangling discord of nation. At another point, it is the beautiful symphony of brotherhood. So, you know, among the discords, we must seek for the symphony. And brotherhood can become successful, can make us successful. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to get, go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. That is the hope. That is the dream, actually. So, ultimately, I don't know whether you have gone through the text like Little Black Boy or Chimney Sweepers by William Black. There was also, you will find the Little Black Boy, there was a particular reference of these racial discriminations and also a kind of a hope that one day when this outer part of our body, that is the skin, it will be completely being vanished. After death, when we reach heaven, the black boy says, then the black cloud will be dispersed. And the, similarly, the white cloud that was there in the present white boy, it will be also being vanished. And then we will be similar. We will come together, close together. We will become the true friends. Okay. The structure will vanish at any moment. What is the color of your soul? What is the color of your mind? Is it the color of your mind? No. Ultimately, we are all humans. That is the fundamental thing. William Blake has pointed out and you will find the same thing is being in operation. So therefore, he says, with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together. Every kind of torture we will face. To stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one particular day. This will be the day when all the God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. What is that? My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. So it is the sweet sand, land of liberty. It is just for you I am singing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's bride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. So everywhere you see. So it is the place of our forefathers, it is the pride of the pilgrims, and from each and every mountainside, let freedom ring. Freedom will be everywhere. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. Until or unless this separatism Abolished, be abolished. The ultimate focus, the ultimate, you know, future will not come closer. So, so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. So everywhere the freedom must come. Okay, But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountain of Tennis. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. From every mountain side, let freedom ring. So in the poem Passage to India, you have found that there are ample references of you know, differences and uh, different orientations of places. Here also you can find the different parts of America has been mentioned by Martin Luther King. So from each and every perspective, in spite of the differentiations, in spite of the divergences that is present within them, ultimately brotherhood must, you know, uh, make a kind of a link between all these things and freedom must be everywhere. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, 
we will be able to speed up that day when all the God's children, black men, white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants, Catholics, in spite of the differentiations, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. And what is the word? Free at last, free at last, the great God Almighty, that is Almighty, we are free at last. That is the fundamental pattern of freedom. That is the actual form of freedom. That is the actual form of liberty that it actually indicates. So that is the fundamental basics of this particular address. This is the fundamental kind of basics of this particular discussion. And hope it will be pointed out vividly and it will be helpful for your coming examinations. Stay attached. Thank you.